Hi, welcome back to Chem with Chem. In this video, we're going to be working question four of chemistry paper two from the January 22 sitting. If this is the first time to the channel, thank you for joining. Check out the other videos that are like this and leave a like. And you can also consider subscribing, turn on post notifications so you can be alerted each time new material is added. All right, let's just start. Part A. The position of an unknown element, Q, is shown in the periodic table in figure three, All right? So Q is in group two below magnesium. So that's the group that we call the alkali, alkaline earth metals. All right, state two factors that are used to arrange the elements in the periodic table. They're arranged based on increase in atomic number, so that's one factor. So two factors. There are three, but they want two. We have an um, increase in atomic number. And we have, based on their chemical properties, we'll just state the third one, but we're only writing two according to their electronic structure. And that can be further broken down. Part two, based on the position of element Q in the periodic table, state whether it would react more vigorously or less vigorously with water than magnesium. And we're just going to use simple language and get straight to the point. It's below magnesium, so we know reactivity increases down the group for metals. So as a result, it would react more vigorously. State whether the solution three, state whether the solution formed from the reaction of Q with water would be acidic or basic give a range on the pH scale in which the solution would occur. So at the beginning, we said that group two elements are called alkaline earth metals. So um, from this reaction, when, when Q reacts with water, we would get um, the solution being alkaline, all right? So it would be basic. And I said alkaline a while ago, but alkaline basic um, can be used interchangeably. Um, an alkali is a base that's soluble in water. So they're almost saying the same thing, all right? Basic and the pH range would be um, between 10 to 12. Strong base, but they're not as strong as, um, they're not as strong as when the group one metals, the alkali metals actually um, react with water. And then four, Based on the position of element Q, write the formula for its carbonate. If we know the formula of magnesium carbonate, we pretty much know the formula for all the carbonates of group two, right? So magnesium carbonate is MgCO3. So it's the same principle that we would use to write the formula for the carbonate of Q. So of course we would have known that magnesium is in group two, so it's Mg2 plus carbonate is CO3, two minus. So of course we need one, one magnesium ion to go with one carbonate, it's CO3, all right? You won't have to go into any LCM of two and two. You know, it's one to one, they cancel out. Two goes, two plus, two plus matches two minus. So a good answer would be, and I'm putting it at the top because I don't want to, I'm putting it right above four, as I can't get to the little line. So it would be Q, C, O, 3. Same principle. Q, 2 plus, C, O, 3, 2 minus. All right? Each of them goes with each other. Now, one, two, one. We should just like that. And we have the formula, no charge. B, sodium reacts with chlorine to form sodium chloride a solid compound with a melting point of 801 degrees Celsius, which conducts electricity in solution or when molten. Deduce the type of bonding present in sodium chloride. Well, I don't know if we're going to deduce or we just know it because sodium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal. Well, if we're, if we're approaching it that way, then we're deducing, but if the bond is ionic, state the appearance that sodium chloride is expected to have. It's supposed to be a white crystalline solid. C, carbon is a non-metal element that is in group four and exists in two forms, diamond and graphite. 
Um, the moment we see these, we should be thinking um, allotropes. Which of these forms of carbon conducts electricity? And of course, that would be graphite. Part two of 4C. Show by using diagrams the difference in structure between diamond and graphite, which accounts for their difference in conductivity. Use solid lines to show strong bonds and dotted lines to show weak bonds. So we just stated that graphite is the one that will conduct electricity. Let us look at why diamond will not conduct, but graphite will conduct, but we have to use diagrams. I'll just add a little annotation to drive home the point. So this is pretty much what is happening in diamond. We have one carbon bonded to four other carbon, and this is repeated throughout the entire structure. So we have to bear in mind that carbon is tetravalent. You're not putting this in your answer, but you're using it to guide you. So but the note we're going to make is that all the four valence electrons in each carbon atom are involved in covalent bonding. So we'll say all four electrons from carbon are involved in strong covalent bonds. So no, no, well, so no free electron is available to carry a current if a voltage were to be applied. All right, so we're just going to, we know that that represents strong bonds. That is enough, all right, that is enough. We're going to look at the structure of graphite now, another form of carbon. That's why we said allotropes earlier on. No, so this is what is happening. So in graphite, we find that each carbon atom is bonded to three others. Carbon is still tetra tetravalent and it should be taking part or it can take part in four bonds. So all, all the carbon atoms, they're taking part in three bonds instead of the four. So you might be asking then, sir, what about the, the fourth electron? And that's the question you should be asking because it means that the fourth electron is free and is spread out throughout the entire structure or you'll come across the term delocalized electrons. So it means if a voltage were to be applied, then, then these electrons would carry the current because electricity is really a move, movement of charged particles. These particles can be ions or electrons. So free electrons are present in the graphite. And so if a voltage were to be applied, it will carry the current. So that's why graphite conducts electricity. So let's finish um, the, the structure. So we have each carbon atom bonded to three others forming layers of hexagonal rings. Hope you're seeing the, the hexagonal um, shape, right? And if you, this, this layer can go on and on. I actually enjoy doing it. As I said, it's therapeutic. Don't just watch me do it, practice it. So, you know, it becomes muscle memory. Yeah, man. All right, so of course, those are the strong ones. And then what you find happening now, we have these weak, intermolecular forces that's holding the layers together. So they are, they are able to slide. They're able to slide over each other. That's why graphite or pencil point, as we know it, snaps so easily. All right, so we can state that these are weak, weak bonds and these are strong bonds. We can also state that each carbon atom has one, free electron to carry current. Just to drive home the point, and just like that, you would have gotten 15 marks. All right, so thank you for joining Kim with Kim. If you've missed questions one, two, three, from this paper, you can check, out, check them out on the channel. Couple later.